Appetite Gunners, the Brady Campaign, the Violence Policy Center, the George Soros groups, with a bunch of fake science being cooked up to claim that guns are causing waves of, 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 of shootings, when in truth, he was saying, uh, the numbers we have from the Justice Department are about 52% mass shootings and general shootings uh, down since 1992. He was saying, though, that's how the Justice Department cooks them. It's more like 60. But we all saw it in the news a month ago where it was admitted that the FBI cooked numbers under orders on mass shootings from the Justice Department to brainwash the public, as the Attorney General publicly said they would do. Now, joining us is the man in the middle of it all, uh, right there on Capitol Hill, every day, tracking what's happening, the conscience of the NRA, as the NRA board member Ted Nugent has said, without GOA, the NRA wouldn't have made their more hardcore turn, thank God, in the last three or four years. And I'm, I'm not bragging, it's a fact, a decade ago, I really pushed Larry Pratt, who's a classy gentleman, uh, to go after the NRA and their milk toast board to get on the offense. And that's happened. Their rhetoric has matched the reality of the tyranny we're facing. Sure, I mean, saying Obama's becoming a dictator sounds radical, but it's true. Open borders, Benghazi, Fast and Furious, IRS escape. You have to match the reality with the rhetoric. <sighs> a lot of times people end up going under tyranny because they just can't believe it's happening to them. And that's in basic criminology. We know Obama promised to sign on to the U.N. Treaty. We know Obama promised to use executive power and other international agreements to go after the Second Amendment. They're banning imports. They're going after ammo. They're not letting the military sell the brass like they used to do. Uh, there's a whole program. They've got the ATF harassing gun shops. Veterans are being put on no buy list with, with no evidence of anything. There is a major cold war against the Second Amendment, but... Lot said, get ready, the new offensive is going to launch in the next few months into the campaign. The expert, Larry Pratt of GunOwners.org, joins us to the end of the hour. They have a powerful article at GunOwners.org. The story is mirrored at Infowars.com. And I want to give him the floor as best I can to break all this down. Headline, secret deal could contain a myriad of gun control restrictions. Uh, ammo bans, will you install gun control be rammed on our throats? And then we've got the quotes of people in the system saying they'll use this to do it, and it's secret. Congress can't see it. They're trying to give the president fast-track authority. WikiLeaks stole, to their credit, uh, the Death Star plans last year, but uh, because they're leftists, though, only leaked the Internet provision that's worse than SOPA and CISPA. So it's on. Internet taxes, regulations, Internet IDs, it's on. Just like your cell phone tracks you, the internet now will, no way to get around it. It's on. So Larry Pratt, uh, I think it's clear to say the next imperial offensive against the Republic is on. You're the general up there in the war room. Please give us the breakdown on exactly what cocktail of attacks are coming and what this secret treaty means. Oh, hi, Alex. Thanks so much for uh, having an interest in this. I think that's going to be very helpful. The... Um, uh, members of Congress, uh, some at least some of the more liberal ones, might say, well, yeah, you, uh, you can find out what's in the uh, proposed treaty. Uh, yeah, right. You can go to a locked room in a basement, surrendering your cell phone before you get there. No pictures, no dictating notes to anybody, nothing with which to write. And then you may look at the proposed legislation one section at a time. And this is from the most open administration ever. <laughs> <laughs> you just, I mean, it, I guess we have to laugh, otherwise we'd be in a, in a white suit coat. Uh, this is just absolutely outrageous. And one of the dangers... And there, there's got to be a myriad of dangers in this approach to legislation. But right now, the bill is amendable. It's just a bill, and it's going to give authority uh, to the president to negotiate a treaty. And when that treaty comes back, the way this thing is being set up, it'll take two-thirds of the Senate to overturn whatever might be in there. No amendments. And so this is the time 
to make any, say, protection amendments for the Second Amendment. And so far, we haven't been able to, to get this of enough concern for a member of the Senate to say, okay, yeah, we got to put in an amendment blocking anything to do with ammunition or firearms, nothing to do with exports, nothing to do with imports, or whatever else our dear leader might think of to put into uh, this legislation, which will become a treaty. Uh, it's really outrageous, and they're treating us like mushrooms in a cave, and I won't get into the weeds on how you feed those mushrooms, but it's not pretty. Well, your article at gunowners.org breaks down the subsections of what we know the U.N.-style gun control, he says he'll do by treaty. I want to get an update on the U.N. treaty. Top secret TPP means you won't know what's in the bill. Again, the TPP is secret. This would just be a bill, basically, I guess, authorizing it. Some Republicans are being duped. I want to talk about that. They're probably being duped by all the campaign donations. Uh, what's the strategy to beat this? If we don't make enough noise about this and force them to say, oh, I didn't see what was coming on this. Yeah, I'll vote against this or I'll at least make a motion to amend it in such a way that uh, the president can't diddle with firearms. Uh, then it's going to go right on through. It's going to take the kind of public outcry that forced the administration to pull back on banning certain AR-15 ammunition. It only is a function of heat. And as the old Senator Dirksen was so fond of saying uh, with his gravelly cigarette-affected uh, uh, voice, uh, when I feel the heat, I uh, see the light. <laughs> and they, haven't, they haven't felt the heat yet. So uh, I hope your listeners are reaching for a butane torch and will use it accordingly. Larry, we know they're coming after our guns. They've stated that's the plan. Everywhere else in the world, they've taken the guns. What is the constellation, the attack pattern? I mean, the UN treaty, this treaty, uh, the ATF coming after the, gun, the bullets. Uh, what's the main attack? Because I was talking to the professor, as I mentioned earlier, and he said he believes the biggest assault ever is about to begin. Well, the president gives every indication that Dr. Lott's concern is not frivolous. Uh, the president has said that he would use his cell phone and his pen to act when the Congress didn't act. Uh, forget that little problem about the legislation in our Constitution originating uh, with the Congress. Uh, but the president doesn't look at the Constitution as something to be obeyed. He looks at it has something to be overcome. And uh, that's what he spent the last six years doing. And uh, my concern is that now that he has no other elections for which he's ever going to be on, likely to be on the ballot, and any of the Democrats who are going to be running in 16 can plausibly say, well, the president's you know, not going to be president anymore. I'm, you know, I'm my own man. And so he, they'll have that plausible deniability. His ability to damage the Democrat name will be a lot less. And my guess is that we haven't seen the full Obama yet. He's getting ready to do it down and dirty. And, and that's the pattern. I mean, we normally see when they can pardon themselves, pardon others, uh, when they can have their party turn on them, they can take the fall and get the agenda through. And we've already seen a massive acceleration of tyranny. Uh, I mean, just opening the borders outside of law, shutting down power plants outside of law, uh, persecuting the Tea Party, not getting in trouble. And it seems to embolden this group of crooks uh, now that uh, they've gotten away with so much. I mean, in my gut, not just intellectually, in my gut, I'm just bracing. Uh, there's one other suggestion that I would make, uh, and, and again, it requires, in this case, backbone in the part of the Republican caucus, and that's asking for a lot, apparently, because uh, it, it's not just the leadership. The leadership is able to do what the leadership has been doing because the caucus has been willing to tolerate it, has not been willing to effectively push back. But the caucus could simply say on just about any spending bill, none of these funds may be used to negotiate or implement the Pacific Treaty. 
uh, that uh, that would just put it into a screeching halt, uh, because anything that they might do would be totally unauthorized, and actually they wouldn't have had the funds to do it at all. Um, of course, they really ought to be impeaching this, Jasper, but clearly they don't have the backbone for that. But at least cutting the funds off is a an obvious solution. The founders gave it to us uh, in the, by giving it to the House of Representatives. Uh, they can uh, control that purse, and if they want to close off the neck of that money bag, they can do that just that easily. You know, I know that Boehner is in the hip pocket of Obama, and the guys play golf and party together. That's been on record for six years. But Mitch McConnell, what is he doing promoting the TPP and now saying nice things about Obama uh, when we just had this major political realignment? Even mainline analysts said it's one of the biggest in the U.S. history, probably the third largest in our 240 years, saying, hey, we put the Tea Party in, we put conservatives in, we put libertarians in, we want all this socialism and big government to stop. And instead, it's all accelerating. Well, McConnell has indeed been a Republican leader. He's been leading Republicans into the camp of voting for various Obama initiatives. And uh, this guy, uh, the fact that he's tolerated by the Republican caucus in the Senate suggests to me that when we have an opportunity to meet our senators and actually our representatives, too, um, Will you promise to me that you will, under no circumstances, vote for Mitch McConnell as Republican leader or uh, uh, Mr. Boehner as Republican leader in the respective houses? Because if they won't give you that flat-out commitment, it means they're wrapped around the finger of a rhino pro-Obama leadership, and that's leading us into perdition. You're up there on Capitol Hill covering these guys, watching them. Why are they so spineless? Can't they see the trajectory of the country is going into total tyranny? Uh, they think they're going to be insulated from this. They think the Democrats are going to leave them alone once they get full power. Can't they smell the aggressive carcinogenic tyranny? Don't they understand that it's like 200 proof and that it, 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 it's not going to coexist with anybody? I don't think they do see that. They think that they're going to be rewarded for having been statesmen, for having produced legislation. And here's their one of their favorite phrases, for showing that they can govern, meaning they can reach across the aisle. Well, why is it that uh, Harry Reid at one time and Nancy Pelosi, why is it that none of the Democrat leaders are invited, nay, and why isn't it insisted upon that they reach across the aisle? Why is it that the only reaching gets done from right to left? Uh, that's because the Republicans, by and large, there are exceptions happily, but by and large, the Republicans want approval from the media. And they know that if they don't play ball with the Democrats, then sure. they're going to be accused of not governing well. Sure. And they've that's the Kool-Aid that's most dangerous in this town. I think that's more dangerous than an outright bribe. It's this idea that you've got to be approved by the media or you're toast. And what they don't get is the only reason Rand Paul or Ted Cruz are popular and at the head of the pack is because they are seen as anti-establishment. Going along, especially the, 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 the way things are now, only only waters you know down the message and and then you're don't stand out with bright colors uh, as the cliche goes shifting gears i want to come back and finish up with their attacks on the second amendment the u.n treaty and more with larry pratt gunowners.org go there sign up for their free updates or become a member if you join any organization you should join gunowners.org uh, you can give them a call uh, as well they're off the website he'll give you the number when we come back uh, to become a yearly member or a lifetime member and if you don't shame on you because uh, we would not even have the Second Amendment right now, I can tell you. Or we'd be in a civil war if it wasn't for the work of gun owners of America. But that's not an overstatement. It's an understatement. Uh, Jade Helm, we've got Senator Cruz coming out saying the government's lost the trust under Obama. That's why Texans are concerned. Louis Gummer was in the military. He says, why is Texas and Utah listed hostile in Orange County? Uh, we've got uh, all these other, the governor coming out, uh, Abbott. 
We're not saying the military is going to capture Texas and take the guns this summer. We never said that. They say that to claim we're deranged. What we said was this is another drill that looks like it's for domestic operations. We've got all these videos coming in of the military training to take on Tea Party and gun owners. The, the police getting the MRAPs saying it's for the Second Amendment. It's for the veterans. Uh, and it looks like the Republicans, a lot of them actually get this and aren't backing down from the media ridiculing them. Chuck Norris has come out and said he trusts the military, but not those pulling the strings. I think this is healthy. Uh, Chuck Norris quoted Benjamin Franklin in his column at WND.com. Distrust and caution are the parents of security. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, what, and we're going to skip this network break so we have more time on Larry Pratt. Larry, what do you make of the overall militarization of police, the overall federalization, the TSA, when the feds themselves are, 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 are basically more and more following UN scripts? Uh, I think it's healthy uh, that, uh, I mean, we heard Al Sharpton say, use the riots to federalize police. Uh, I mean, this is a federalization happening, and I think it's very healthy uh, that a lot of the real libertarian conservative constitutionalist leaders are, are not throwing info wars under the bus. They're saying, no, it's reasonable to question this. If Operation Jade Helm were being conducted under a President uh, Paul or President Cruz or President Walker, uh, three of the conservative front runners, I guess we could say, um, we might be watching to see what's happening, but we wouldn't have the same uh, inability to accept what the administration is saying. This administration has not earned our trust. They have lied repeatedly. So even if what they're saying happens to be true, who's to know? <laughs> I mean, when have they told the truth? Right. So uh, God bless Governor Abbott, who said, OK, uh, we'll take you at your word, but uh, don't mind if uh, I have the National Guard keeping an eye on you reporting to me. Good for him. Well, you're supposed to have the governor over the guard and the feds have tried to take that over and, and make it ceremonial now. T to me, this is just the, the states and the people flexing their muscles. Yeah, uh, it's long overdue, but I'm glad it's happening now uh, better than never. And um, uh, kudos to uh, uh, those who are questioning. And I don't know that any of these public officials have actually made any accusations that this is a nefarious no. plot. All they're saying is, hey, let's have a little bit of openness, Mr. President, transparency. Well, that's what it is. I mean, the president is acting as a dictator more and more. Congress is letting him do it. And I think it's it's it might be too little too late. I mean, who knows what power grab he may pull. This shows a little bit of that old American instinct, like Ronald Reagan said, to trust but, but verify. And, and, I mean, look, everybody knows from Forbes to the Associated Press to Nightline that they're training the military to take on vets and gun owners and saying we're the threat, not al-Qaeda or ISIS. Everybody knows that. And guess why we know? They're, they're busy claiming we don't like the military. It's the military that's telling us they're being given these missions. They don't like it. The military still, from everything I can pick up, is substantially supportive of the Constitution. They respect the fact that they took an oath to uphold the Constitution, not to support Mein Führer, uh, which they did in Nazi Germany, which they've done in totalitarian countries around the world. Uh, the oath is to a person rather than to a Constitution. And we still have substantially, I think, police and military that take that seriously. And that's a saving grace. Obama's been very frustrated. We know that he's been cutting out leaders from the military. Actually, in one case, I read of a battlefield officer who was cashiered on the spot in Afghanistan, um, in the middle of a battle. He's told, you're out of here, bud. Uh, so that's what our dear leader is doing to try to neuter uh, those constitutionally loyal officers in the military. But I think he's going to have a lot more neutering to do, hopefully. And Well, that's right. There's a battle for the heart and the soul of our republic. And at the heart of it's our military and our police. And the police have been given a lot of bad training. There are some bad cops, some bad departments. But overall, George Soros is funding this anti-cop movement to try to make social change and have an Arab, uh, you know, uh, uh, commie spring, whatever you want to call it. I mean, Al Gore said we need an Arab spring here in America three years ago. George Soros is funding it.
uh, but it's a, a socialist spring to make reform about shooting cops in the head. No, that's not what reform is. No, uh, it's certainly not. And, you know, just uh, I, 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 before we run out of time, I just want to celebrate the unnamed officer in uh, Garland, Texas. Here's a guy who faced with a couple of Muslim terrorists under fire from guys with rifles. And he, it's, it's got to be his, his off-duty weapon because it's a Glock 45. I'm not aware that uh, that's a police firearm uh, uh, in many departments anyway. So he pulls out his pistol. He obviously is able to perceive that hitting center of mass doesn't do anything because the uh, the terrorists are wearing body armor. So this guy is able to pop them in the head and stop them before they're able to kill anybody. Amazing. Only in America. If that had been in France, he would have been a five-day manhunt, martial law. We never would have heard the end of it. Right. And, uh, what do happily, you think of the anti-gunners? And, and just to be clear, when I meant Arab Spring, as I meant he wanted something like that here, he said a, a yep. liberal spring, a black spring. Yep. The point is they want to get a classic communist civil war going. What they don't understand is that a lot of the motivation for that spring, say in Egypt, was against Morsi, the, the Muslim dictator. And things quieted down when the pro-American military took over and put Morsi in his pal in jails. So these guys can't even read what's happening abroad correctly. They hope they can somehow ignite a Muslim flame to burn up the world. And our dear leader has been doing what he can uh, toward that end but so far they they were blocked big time in egypt and you know i'm not saying that the generals are a bunch of uh republican small but they did stop the blowing up of the churches and crucifying christians upside down and letting people live in peace and letting tourists come to the country it's a whole lot better with them than without them <laughs> so, Larry and, Pratt and the of Gun Owners was on the wrong side. Larry Pratt of Gun Owners of America is here. How do people become members? How do people support the literal tip of the spear and the defense of uh, human right to self defense? Uh, you can find us at gunowners.org, and even if you're not ready to join with a contribution today, do get on the email alert list because that's how we have stopped anti-gun legislation even when our friends at the NRA were supporting it. So it's a lot of action there. It's free and it, it's very easy to use. And we would just urge strongly that hopefully most people can get on the Internet, go to gunowners.org, go to that take action area on the site and begin getting those alerts. That's because right. You'll find out what's going on, and we'll make it possible to do something effective about it. Well, I've got a fighting spirit. You've got a fighting spirit. And I'm just sick of people thinking we're doomed. Every time we take action, we win. The problem is enough people aren't doing it. So everybody needs to go there and become a year member, a lifetime member. They need to sign up for the alerts. They need to put them on Facebook and Twitter and get them out to people because we're going to start turning the tide against this tyranny. The Professor Lott, Dr. Lott, thinks that's happening as well. The alternative is total enslavement. Uh, Larry Pratt of Gun Owners of America, thank you so much for the time. Alex, thanks so much for letting me in front of your microphone. Oh, you're, you're awesome, sir. Thank you for the time. There goes thank Larry you. Pratt, ladies and gentlemen.